In this video, we're going to talk about your different shot types you have at your disposal as an event photographer. You have to remember as an event photographer, you want to tell a full story, and these are the different shots you have at your disposal to do so. The first one will be your establishing shot. In cinema, we're used to establishing shots just telling us where a scene takes place. But when it comes to photography, it's much more about scale. If you're shooting a big corporate event in a massive hall, you need to show scale by showing how many people are there, having people interacting. Maybe you're at a conference and there's a lot of different booths and you want to capture all of them to show how many vendors participated and how many people were filling that hall. If you're shooting a wedding, people want that wide shot of all the different participants or guests at that wedding. If it's the ceremony, getting a wide shot of everyone, not just the bride and groom, but all the different people that are there, that's really important. Additionally, establishing shots are an anchor to all the images that follow. It gives you an idea of where those images are, so you're not in some sort of black hole where you have these close-up candids, but you have no idea where those are actually shot. It also gives you an idea of maybe what those people are interacting off of. So let's talk about the next type of shot that without your establishing shot would feel a little out of place, and that would be your close-up candid. Close-up candids are something I kind of specialize in if you take a look at my work. There are these close images that kind of define an emotional feeling that a participant, someone there has. They're ringing reminders of what it was like to be in that moment for people that were there or people that weren't there. It gives them an insight into what people were feeling. This is a really important shot. It's not so much about anyone else, although I do recommend giving some sort of context without taking away the isolation of getting in real close gives you. So. That could be shooting over someone's shoulder, but at a very shallow depth of field. That way, the person you're shooting over is blurred out, but you know that person that you're your subject, you know they're reacting off of something. It could be a funny joke. It could be very serious. It doesn't matter, but you know they're reacting off of a different person. I like to shoot these shots by shooting through things pretty often. It gives a more candid feel. It's already a candid, but when you're able to frame your shot, you're not only able to draw the eye in toward that subject if you're using two different things to frame, or even sometimes I'll shoot through a wall. So I use part of a wall in my shot to draw the eye into the subject I'm really trying to get that emotional moment from. I tend to shoot these shots with telephotos. It could be a 135 millimeter, it could be a 70 to 200, or even an 85 millimeter. I often use that 85 millimeter if I want to get even more shallow than what my 70 to 200 can do for me, and I don't mind getting in close. It could be really exciting as well, getting in close and feeling unnoticed. If you can be unnoticed at closer focal lengths, then you're a good photographer. So I really enjoy shooting that, it gives me a more shallow depth of field, which helps me further isolate my subject. The next type of shot would be your candid interactions. This is typically about more than one person. Now, you might have one person that is the focus, but you're just giving a little bit more information about what they're reacting off of. Sometimes you have more than one subject matter. Maybe they're both equally important, and so you need to shoot at appropriate apertures to get a, the proper depth of field. Remember, if you're at 2.8, unless those people are perfectly lined up, odds are you're not gonna get both in focus. It really depends. So another thing I wanna say, don't always shoot wide open, guys. Shooting wide open is appropriate for isolating a subject, but when you have more than one subject and they're not really, one doesn't take priority over the other, having one out of focus is doing you a disservice. These shots are actually a bit more challenging than your kind of isolated, candid, emotional shot because you're having to shoot at wider apertures, which takes more skill. It's really easy to just zoom in close, blur everything out to oblivion, and then get these emotional highs, but getting more than one person in focus and still having a pleasing composition can be a little bit more challenging. What that means is you're gonna have to mind your rules of composition a bit more. You are especially going to have a challenge of balancing everything out. If th more things are in focus, they're going to pull your eye. And so the idea is that if you have something here pulling your eye's attention too hard, um, this is going to be an empty space. It won't work. So you kind of find ways to balance the image. The next type of shot to talk about would be posed shots. I'm not talking about portraits. I'm talking about where you actually approach people though and ask for a photograph. This could be in front of a step and repeat, but right now we're gonna talk about posed images when you see a small group of people and you approach them and ask to take their photograph. 
It's not my favorite part of the job. It's a piece of cake though, and you shouldn't be intimidated to approach people. These are shots you're often gonna get at a cocktail hour and that kind of thing when people are just mingling. So what I like to do, I go right up to them, a small group of people, maybe two or three or four. I say, hey, do you mind if I get a shot of you guys? And pretty much always they're gonna say, absolutely. Now, I really recommend also taking advantage of approaching them and asking for that shot because it's a good opportunity to get some candid interactions as well. And the way to do this is simply ask them to look at each other. Everyone laughs and it's so goofy when you're standing next to someone for a posed shot and then the photographer says, hey, look at each other. You say, oh, could I get one of you guys looking at each other? They always bust out laughing or smile. It's fun. It's easy. And then if you're missing your interactions, if you haven't really refined your timing yet, you're able to sneak that type of work into your body, your collection of images. Another type of shot would be your portrait shot. Now, these are shots that are actually a little more artistic, let's call it. I love to shoot these nowadays for myself. I often bring a film camera to every job I go to, and if there's someone notable, I'll ask them just real quick, hey, can I grab a shot of you? Uh, this last month or two, I've done this with Nancy Pelosi, Adam Schiff, and Jamie Lee Curtis, and it just, it, it's fun. It changes it up for me, because when I'm shooting an event, I'm typically not working with anyone very extensively. I'm just documenting. But this is a good opportunity for you to build a portfolio, enjoy enjoy it. You never know, it, it's a bonus for your client. When I photographed Adobe Max, which is Adobe's big event, um, I didn't have to approach Nick Offerman and ask for a portrait or Boz Lerman or any of their guests. Um, Brandon Stanton, the creator of Humans of New York too. I, I went the extra mile and I asked, hey, could I get a portrait of you? And they were very accommodating and most of them actually really enjoyed it. Next, we have your detail shots. If you guys are familiar with my work, you know I'm not a huge detail shots fan, but make no mistake, they are really important. Detail shots are especially important for corporate events where maybe there are corporate sponsors. And that's actually a lot of the social media images they're going to use. Even though I want them to use those emotional highs, they're, and they end up using those shots to show the sponsors that participated. It might be in their contract, for all I know, with the sponsor. I can't say for sure, but I know they use them, so it's really important not to neglect them. That said, your, your priority as a photographer is to capture that event, and that event is an event full of people, and people should be your priority. You want shots that capture a moment that define the event. You want shots that are ringing reminders of what it was like to be there for the people that were there, or let people know what it was like to be there if they couldn't make it. You want to immortalize shots like the first time a mother sees their daughter walking. That's what should take priority, but detail shots are important. You gotta understand also about detail shots. You may overemphasize their importance if you're looking at a lot of different types of blogs, but you have to remember that things like wedding blogs are there to promote vendors, they're not there to promote emotional highs, the moments that most people really care about. So keep that in mind. I remember when I first started out as a photographer, I shot weddings. And back then, before you're kind of more self-assured, you do look at a lot of other people for inspiration. So I would look at these wedding blogs, but they always seemed a, li a little off. I never could understand how out of, literally out of 135 images I counted once, 90 of them were detail shots of someone's wedding. And that might be great to show off the vendor and to, you know, for business, but that's not great for the client. If that's what the client actually got, people don't want that but don't neglect them. Get them out of the way and then focus on what really matters and that is those defining moments at an event. So that's it for today. Again, if you haven't checked out the complete guide, be sure to do so. If you feel you're already ready for those advanced tips, check out my advanced event photography tips. I'll link it above. And until the next video.